Hey everyone, I always felt that one of the walls in my room was pretty bare and so finally I decided that I wanted to build some shelves for my cat. Meet Gremlin. I previously built a cat tree for him so I figured a few shelves would be nothing. And the reason why I wanted to make shelves for him partly was to put his food up there because my dog loves cat food and currently I keep his food on my dresser, which my dog is now big enough to reach up there and get to it. So I needed a place that was higher up to put that cat food. And I also just wanted to give him some high places that he could hang out on. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make some of your own. Let's get started. You'll need a heavy duty stapler that can also use brads or finishing nails, a drill, a jigsaw, wood glue, stain or whatever you want to use to finish your wood, carpet, food and water bowls with a lip around the edges, brackets to hang the shelves, one piece of wood, 10 inch by one inch by eight foot, cut into three pieces that are 32 inches long, four pieces of wood, two inch by one fourth inch by four foot. Take three of the pieces and cut into two pieces that are 32 inches and 10 inches long. With the fourth piece, cut three pieces that are 10 inches long. I wanted a nice clean look, so I used miter joints. I made a total of three shelves, but I only made two types, one being a food and water shelf with recessed bowls, and the other being a simple carpeted shelf. First things first, you need to cut all the wood to size. I don't have a workbench, so I just do this kind of stuff on my floor. I got the big piece of wood cut at the store, but for the smaller pieces, I whipped out my miter box and pull saw and got to measuring and cutting. When you're cutting wood for a miter joint, you want the proper measurement to be the smaller face of the wood, like so. Only one end of the 10 inch pieces need to be cut at an angle, the other just need to be cut flat because they're going to be resting against the wall. For the food and water shelf, take your bowls and figure out the placement you want. I decided to put one on each end. Since we're making recessed bowls, we'll need to drill a hole into the wood that's big enough to fit the body of the bowl, but small enough so the lip can't go through. I flipped the bowl over and traced around the bowl's lip. And from there, since the lip of the bowls I used was about 1 4th inch, I eyeballed a smaller circle that was shrunk about 1 4th inch all the way around. First drill a pilot hole on the inside of the small circle, then simply stick the jigsaw in and trace the circle. I left the larger circle intact as a guide of where to absolutely not let the jigsaw pass, just in case. Time to test fit the bowl. Perfect. Repeat on the other side. Now we get to assemble these things, and yes, back on my floor again. I really need a workbench. Apply glue and use the heavy duty stapler to tack the wood in place with brads or finishing nails. I don't have clamps, but since these won't be stress points, you could get away with just using the brads to hold the wood in place while the glue dries. Repeat for each side and each shelf. You may have noticed I had a gap where the wood didn't quite meet perfectly. It's unfortunate, but thankfully it's fixable. You just have to squirt some glue into the gap, sprinkle some sawdust into it, squish it in, and then sand the excess glue away. So if you have this problem, hopefully you haven't cleaned that workspace just yet. It's not the prettiest, but hey, it's better than having a gap right there. And for me, I stained them a dark color so you can't even tell anymore. And here's what the assembled food and water shelf looks like with the bowls in place. It's coming together! Now just assemble the shelves that will have carpet in the same way. But we're going to add the carpet after we finish the wood. So let the glue dry overnight and then it's time to finish. Finish the shelves however you like. I chose a dark stain. Apply the finish and let dry or cure as long as the directions say. Once they're dry, it's time to attach the carpet. First cut the carpet to the exact size of the big board, which was 32 by 10 inches. This is the same carpet that I used to make the cat tree that I had mentioned earlier. I just went to my local hardware store and got a roll of remnant carpet for pretty cheap. I still have so much of that stuff that I'm trying to figure out what to do with. I put some glue on the wood and laid the carpet down. 
I don't even know if the glue did anything because ultimately I stapled the carpet in place anyway, but it made me feel better, so I did it. After I laid the carpet over the glue, I stapled it in place. I made sure to staple the crap out of this thing so the carpet would stay put if Grem decided to use it as a flat scratching post. And here are the finished shelves. Now we just gotta hang them up. I wish we had splurged a little to get nicer brackets to hang these up, but that's too late now. Oh well, I could probably update them later. In stereotypical cat fashion, he was totally unimpressed and didn't want to have anything to do with them. But a little catnip and some cat toy action later, and he finally got up on them. And besides coming down to cuddle with me while I sleep, he's been up there ever since. I hope you'll enjoy. I'm glad that they came out the way that I was picturing them in my head. And it seems like Gremlin loves them too. Which is the whole reason I made them. So that's good. If you like this video and want to see more, then please subscribe, and if you have any questions or suggestions for new videos, then please leave a comment down below. Um, as always, you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, or Instagram. See you next week!